All right. So uh, my wife told me I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Jamie said, yeah, that happens to a lot of us. She said, no, literally, I woke up on the other end of my bed. So I thought that was, that was kind of funny. It happens to us sometimes. And so uh, this morning, first of all, if it's your first time with us here at River City, welcome to River City. Can we go ahead and give it Hey, it's good to have you guys with us today. If it's your second or third or fourth time, just kick, just, just, just go ahead, kick your shoes off, make yourself at home, just hang around. And so we just went into small groups this week. Who went to their small group this week? Did you enjoy your small group this week? Let me hear you if you enjoyed your small group this week. We had a good time in small group this week. And so, um, and also we started Logos this week. And what is Logos? Logos is on campus Bible study groups. And we had a really good time in those, uh, just getting kicked off this week and really applying some things that I'm going to kind of get into today uh, and, and just applying the things that really matter. You know what really matters in your life is the Word of God being true. Amen. Do you believe that? I believe that totally. And so um, today, we're starting a new series, and it's pretty simple, How to Deal, and it's coming out of a series where we, we, that we call The Great Return. Did everybody enjoy that series? I hope you enjoyed that series, uh, talking about the return of Jesus. And I told my wife, I said, I feel like, you know, we talked about the return of Jesus, so how do I deal with life in the process of these things? How do I, how do I approach situations in life? And so in this series today, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about faith, and this is going to be really the foundation of how how to deal with situations. I believe everything starts at our faith. If somebody look at your neighbor and say, faith. Now look at the other neighbor and say, you need some faith. <laughs> we all need a little faith. And today I want to try to help you with that a little bit. We're going to talk about some things like depression, uh, stress, and some parenting situations. Uh, anybody here need any, need any help in your parenting? Um, I do. I know that much. Um, uh, and and I, I would like to say this. I don't approach speaking about parenting as a person who thinks I know it all. I, I don't. Um, I'm, I, my oldest children are nine years old, and so uh, that means I'm only nine years into it. But there's some people here, you have some years in parenting. Some of you have learned some things along the way. Some of you have learned things the hard way along the way. Anybody here want to wait and some, some people, look at those honest people. Those right there shall inherit the kingdom of God. And so um, <laughs> we, sometimes you learn things the hard way. I've had, to, um, I've, I've had moments where I've blown up on my kids. Anybody here ever done that before? I, just, I don't know why I'm talking about this so much. This is coming in a few weeks, but I feel like it, today it just needs to lay into your spirit. So, uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, we, you've blown up on your kids. And then you had to turn around and go back and... and, and and try to, uh, try to do things God's way, because I can do things emotionally. Today we're going to talk a little bit about that too, uh, as we're coming into this. But, but I just want to encourage you to stay faithful over the next couple of weeks, because it might, there might be something spoken into your life that you need. And today, really it's kind of, I'm, I'm bad about this, putting the cart before the horse. I tell you, here's what to do, to, to do it, and here's why. Uh, and that's probably because, speaking of parenting again, when I was a kid, like, how many of your kids ask you why when you tell them to do something? Awesome. Yeah, mine too. I, how, many of, how many of you, if you'd ask your parents why, it would have been a situation? Yeah, I know, right? Uh, my, my, at home, when I was growing up, it was, hey, do this, do it, and uh, you'll find out why. Why? <laughs> I'll show you why if you want me to show you why, <laughs> right? And, uh, and, but, but today, like a lot of us, like we, we ask why to a lot of things, and I really hope that this series kind of can help us through some situations, because we're talking about Jesus coming, but, but how do I deal with life's situations in the process? That's a, that's a key point, so I want to try to help you with that. This morning, I want to tell you this, that you got to have faith through it all. And while, while I say that, that that is, you know, and last week preached about revival, and you, you come in, and, and you probably, Monday hits you, you got all excited, thinking about revival, and then Monday rolls around, and, and you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, like Eden, on the other end of the bed. You wake up, and, and it's just, it's just like, I don't feel, man, I don't feel like I'm having revival in my life. And I want to tell you something, that you can walk in revival every single day. Now, do you walk in revival every single day? I hear a lot of people that talk about walking in revival every day, but then they don't show you. Now, we are the social media generation. 
We are the social media generation. I saw a post that was pretty funny. Uh, we were at Disney World earlier uh, a few weeks ago, and, and it's, I saw a Disney World post. Y'all, y'all ever notice, like, when you go places, all of a sudden you start seeing ads on your phone for it immediately? I don't know what is up with that. As a matter of fact, my wife and I were joking. We said that we had never seen a Disney World ad before on TV. And in the past few weeks since we've gotten home, we have seen Disney World ads. It seems like every time they go to a commercial break, I'm literally like in one of those twilight, do 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 Big Brother is watching. <laughs> but I thought it was funny, though, like those pictures, like everybody takes the pictures. The picture, like if you don't have a picture, then you must not have been there, right? And we're the social media generation. I saw a funny deal. This guy's telling his wife to get ready uh, get ready to take the picture, and she goes, <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> okay, nailed it, and, then, and in the caption it said, I don't know what it is, it's like gravity just releases from one leg for women when they take their social media pictures, that's like, that's like a thing, well, we live in a generation where all you see is people's high points, but you don't see their low points. You see pastors who talk constantly about, and I I don't post a lot anymore, I admit. Uh, I've just, I've gotten to where I, I'm just a Facebook stalker, right? I'm just, I'm just on there stalking stuff, and that's, that's how it is. But, but the fact of the matter is we see preachers talk about revival every day, living in revival today. But I want to ask you the question, do you think it feels like revival every single single day? And today I want to get into some things to kind of get on that, where we can lay a foundation that's going to help us walk through other things. I've made some comments about anxiety and some of the, some of the other things that we see in life, and I, I want to be clear about things. I've cracked some jokes, and I, I, didn't, I didn't mean for them to downplay it. Listen, you think I don't deal with anxiety every day? You, you think I don't? You know, when they're doing those announcements up there, I'm standing behind that wall going, you could run right now. You could just, look, you could just run right now. And then I realize, no, I got, I got, I got, I got a job to do. And the fact of the matter is, a lot of us deal with these types of situations, and it's because our foundations are shaken up. Our foundations get shook, and we go into places of depression. I could tell you about places of depression. I'm an only child. I can crawl in a shell like you have never seen. I can tell you about stress. I can, my kids can tell you I can tell you about stress. Remember those blowouts I was talking about a second ago? Come on, some of us, like, we, we really deal with some situations. And this morning, as I'm getting into this passage in Mark chapter 9, there's a man, he's dealing with a situation with his son. And this is where we find ourselves sometimes in situations uh, where, where we, we, we can't deal with what's going on. And, 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 and we come to God, but we, we, we still, as we come to God, we say, God, I have faith in you. But, but still, there's some other things. As we talk about the return of God and the excitement that that draws, it's like, yeah, that's great. I said, I had a great time. I said, the worship was awesome. Uh, everything went well. But, but now, I'm, there's no music playing. It's Monday. I'm on my way to work. I'm late to work. That, that, that would be me. But anyways, um, I'm, I'm late to work or, or I'm, I'm just frustrated by situations that happened at home before I had, and, and God, I'm still dealing with some things right now. And what, what happens here, a man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. Now, I was talking about parenting a while ago. Anybody here have a kid that throws themselves to the ground? Okay, we have some honesty in the room. Yeah, gnashing of teeth. <laughs> oh, man, I, I tell you what, my youngest one, she'll, this is her last Sunday as a four-year-old. And, and it's, this is, my wife said that today, and we both kind of puckered our lips a little bit because it's like she's, moved, she's getting older. And I, I'm, I'm savoring every moment with her right now because I, I realize she's my last one. Uh, most likely, and uh, anyway, <laughs> hey, it is what it is, so, <laughs> woman had triplets, she's like, no, dude, I'm done, <laughs> and so, um, so we, it, it's just one of those, one of those situations uh, where, where, where you, you know, you, you see her, she, she, like, there's those older ones, they're four years older, and they're bigger and stronger, but she does not care. Y'all have a kid like that? 
Well, in this case, he had a kid that was afflicted. This kid was in a situation of possession. The foaming at the mouth, gnashing teeth, becomes rigid. Now, I'm not telling you you got possessed kids. Let me clarify. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this. There is a spiritual world that is at work. And there's a spiritual world that wants to come into your home and it wants to create, it wants to create chaos. It wants to create confusion. It wants to really, at the end of the day, it wants to create division. There's a lot of analysts trying to figure out what's going on in the world right now. I'm going to tell you one of the biggest issues going on in the world right now is that families are being broken up. I joked with my wife the other day. I said, you know what's wrong with the generation's uh, before us and even our generation she said what I said we had perfectly manicured yards and our families were in shambles what, what, what do you mean we were f- so focused on presenting to the world I'm just using that example so focused on presenting a perfect picture to the world and so many times inside the house it was in pieces And in this case, I think, I think spirit, the spiritual will come into these situations when mom and dad are not solid. And it's, I'm actually kind of already getting on my first point this morning. When mom and dad are not solid and God's not really first in the home situation. Listen, let me tell you something. You have to intentionally make God first in your home. It's an intentional thing. Like praying before dinner is important. I sat down late to dinner a few weeks ago, and I'd run in, I got my plate, I sat down, I said, all right, we got to pray, and they looked at me and said, Dad, Macy already prayed. <laughs> I looked down there, and she's just eating. <laughs> I don't know if it's that she was keeping God first, or she just didn't want to wait. <laughs> but I like that, I, I like that you already beat me to it. I, I, I love it that you beat me to it, because because it says that you're learning some things that before, before I take it in, God, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to you first. And so it goes on. He says, I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Oh, unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? He said, how long shall I put up with you? Anybody here ever feel like God's putting up with you? Oh, man, let me tell you something. I, I feel there, there's times in my life where I'm like, God, I, I, don't, I don't know why. Why, as some preachers say it, why you would continue to put up with me? I'm so glad he does, though. He goes on. And he says, bring the boy to me. So, that, so they brought him. And when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father. Now, there's kind of some comedy right here. Uh, (laughs) I mean, even Jesus at this point backed up and asked the question, how long has he been like this? (laughs) Like, I mean, if you pay attention to that, he asked, like he knew that, he already knew there was a situation. The boy goes to this point, he says, how long has he been like this? Father answers, well, from childhood, and he goes on, he says, it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, somebody say, if you can. See, a lot of us pray a lot of prayers of God, if you can. And I want to tell you this morning, he can we serve a God that can. This past week, we had somebody come up for prayer, and I'm, I'm going to let her tell the story, but, but at the end of service, after, we, after you preach something like that, you better be ready to pray, right? And so we laid hands, Terrell and I laid hands on her, we prayed for her, and, and said, was it, it's kind of loose. I said, here's the deal, we put a time, we put a stamp on it, didn't we? We said, you're going to start, you're going to start seeing the difference right now. All of a sudden, the dizziness went away. I said, by the end of the day, you're going to start, what, what was that? That was speaking some things. God gave us dominion, come on, you have dominion on this earth. Speak some things in the, under the power of the name of Jesus. And I got a text that night, everything, my ears popped, I got the fluid run. Well, I, hope, I hope it's okay. I, said, I got fluid running out of my ears. Anybody else here ever had that happen to you? That is one of the best feelings in the world. And we prayed again Wednesday for further. Is it? How's it going? 
It just keeps improving, just keeps improving, just keeps improving. Let me tell you something. Well, Chris, that's just natural healing process. No, no, like this has been going on for a while. And as soon as we begin to speak to the situation, God begin to, it's not an if you can, like this father has, if you can. Let me tell you this morning, Jesus can, okay? Put that into your spirit. He can. So he says, if you can. I like what Jesus said. What did he say right there? He said, if you can, if you can, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately, though, here's where some of us are right here. The boy's father exclaimed, I do, but help me deal with my unbelief. And this is where a lot of us find ourselves in our lives. I believe, God, I, 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 I've turned my life to you. I'm living for you. I believe that your word is true. I believe that you're really a God who can deal with situations and make a difference in situations in my life. But God, I still got a little unbelief I'm still battling with. Now, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to be honest about it. I have to deal with unbelief. So anybody else here? Yeah, I, I have to deal with some unbelief. I've, I've walked into situations to pray and just said, oh, dear Jesus. Y'all ever been there before? Pray for my healing. And you walk in and you see that in the, in the monitors aren't looking very good and you go, oh, oh, Lord. And you got to speak into those impossible situations. You got some situations in your home. You got some situations in your anxiety. We're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about depression and stress. These types of, I told you that. We, we, we have some situations where, God, I can't seem to shake myself out of this. And this morning, I, I want to I help you start practicing some things that are going to help you walk out of some situations in your life. So everybody look at your neighbor and say, this is how you deal. This is how you deal. This morning as we're looking at faith, I want to go to a passage of Scripture that really shows us some people and walk through some people in Scripture that showed faith. And, and, and they're, they're showing a faith. We actually learned some lessons. Hebrews chapter 11, 1 through 2 says like this. This is the NIV. And then I'm going to read you the New King James Version because I want to make a point off of it. This is more of a practical way of looking at it. It says, now faith is being sure. Everybody say sure. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is in the NIV. It says, this is what the ancients were commended for. We're going to look in the Old Testament and see what some of these people were commended for. But I want to, I want to break this down for a second into the, if you look at the New King James Version, I want, to, I want you to pay attention to something right here. Hebrews 11, and this time we're going to go 1 through 3. It says, now faith is the, look at your neighbor say, substance. Now, I don't know about you, but, but when I think of substance, I think of things I can touch, right? I think of things that have, there, there's substance, it's, it's tangible. I have a lot of substance. Hey, don't be laughing too much, okay? <laughs> no, I do. I, like, I, I, have a, I have a lot of substance, right? I, I can step on the scale and go, well, today is a very substantive day. Man, I, like, like substance, something you can touch. He said, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence, everybody say evidence, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. Now in James we read that faith without works is, is dead. Now, when, I, when you start paying attention to the scripture, in other words, faith has something that's something that, of substance. Something that is, faith has something that shows a little evidence. And today, I want to I help you show some evidence even through the low time when it's not a social media perfect day. But, but you know what? I can still have some evidence today that I'm living for. Anybody want some evidence in your life that God's moving? He says this, he says, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. He said, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word 
of God. Like, like right here by faith. I, a lot of us are like, we're, we're looking for him. We have an awesome apologetics course here. Pastor Brandon teaches that course. Anybody here, if you've ever gone through it, you've enjoyed it. He's actually the point. Homeboy's got his own, man, he's writing his own curriculums and everything. I mean, he is just like, like doing it all. And, 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 and I, I, I'd like to say right there, that's okay. As, as a husband, like, Zara has nothing to do with it. He does all of it. He does <laughs> No, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, seriously, though, he, he has written some amazing, they got pictures, they got everything in their own books, and, and I, I, think it's, I think it's important that we have some apologetics. We have to, have, have to be able to do, defend our faith. But, but today, I want to ask you the question, do you believe that God really did frame the world? Like, it's a decision I make. Listen, I am looking for God in everything. So I'm not trying to get rid of See, asking questions says, God, God, show yourself to me. Instead, a lot of us, are, we live in a life of, we're looking for an out. And my generation was horrible about it. And I want to tell you this morning, it's by faith that we understand that the world's were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So how do I, how do I, so then Chris, how do I bring substance to this? How, how is there evidence in these things? And today, that's what we're going to look at. We're going to walk down this passage of scripture, starting at verse 4 this morning. We're going to look through what the writer here of Hebrews writes about, about the people who showed some faith. So real quick, Hebrews 11 and 4 says this, says, by faith, everybody say, by faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. Now, one, one preacher said it like this, Cain tried to offer a better out, a sacrifice, but he wasn't able. Yeah. That was a good corny one. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. See, Abel, he, he, he raised livestock, and what Abel did was he gave the first fruit of his life before he ever knew if that if say it's a say it's a sheep before he ever knew if that mama was going to keep producing he said you know what god i give i give you this first fruit of this mama because god i believe by faith you were this 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 sheep is gonna she's gonna produce a lot of lambs like how many of us are putting faith in god in a level where we're saying god before i can see it i'm just going i'm just going to put faith in it now, that, that, that applies to our giving, whether there's time, treasure, talent, however we're doing those things. And we, we're going to talk a little bit about this later this year because we, we have some giving opportunities. And I believe God's going to bless this church. Hey, this church has blessed missions. I believe God's going to bless this church. Do you believe that? I believe that. Come on. And I already preached about this a little bit. What did Abel do? It's pretty simple. Here's, here's what made him different is he was clear about something. He put God first. What does this mean? God only knows how to be first. Like a lot of us, we say, I put God on a priority list, but if he's not number one on the priority list, I'm going to tell you right now, he's not there at all. You're faithful. You're here at church today. It's, it's a beautiful thing to see. I, see. I hear people talk about it in some states where, where some people are just, they're just trying to continue living like nothing ever happened in the world. And there are some things we talked about in the last few weeks. There's no going back to a normal. We're, we're, we're in a new time now. And I believe that. And I want to tell you something. It's, it's not a time to wake up and at, lean over and ask your spouse on Sunday morning, hey, are we going to go to church this morning? If I leaned over and looked at Jamie and said, are we going to go to church this morning? It would, literally, it would be like, a, are you crazy? You got to preach, dude. Obviously, we're going to church now. <laughs> no, see, like, like, it's not a question of whether or not we're going to church. Even when I, my dad's the same way. When we're out of town, we'll be out of town. The other one will be taking care of a service. And, and, and what happens around 9 a.m. on Sunday morning? 
Uh, we, we know, okay, we're starting to, you know, the team's already been here. They're doing sound checks about 8 to 8.15. That's what's going on. What happens? I, I'm going I'm, I'm to I'm stay with, hey, how's everything going? <laughs> Why? Because it starts, it gets in your mind and it's stuck in who you are. You find identity in the kingdom of God when you put God first. I'm reading on this passage, or in another passage, Genesis 4, 3 through 4, reads like this. It says, in the course of time, Cain brought some of the good fruits of the soul as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the first. Now here's, here's a key point right here. Cain just brought him, some, brought him some portions. Abel brought the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel because of his offering. Look at your neighbor and say, God's got to be first. God's got to be first. Like if I'm in, if I'm in Waco, Texas on a Sunday morning, I'm going to be at church. God forbid. Now, now there, I understand emergencies. I absolutely do. But like, I'm going to be at church. There, there is no question of I wake up and I, I, I decide whether or not I'm going to go to church. On Saturday night, you're looking at your kids saying, get in bed. Why? Because we're going to church in the morning. Right? Second thing is this. In Hebrews 11 and 5, he goes on and he says, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He cannot be found because God had taken him away. Now, I, I want you to, we don't know a lot about Enoch because there's a short little passage there, but there's some key points we learned. When, when God is first, number two thing we need to do in Enoch's lesson is walk with God. In other words, he's not just first in my life, but I, I actually have a conversation with him about things that I'm doing in my life. This is a key point. Now, a lot, a lot of us, we, we, we go and we make decisions and we do something and then we turn around and look at God and go, God bless that. Like, I've done that before. It said, hey, God bless that. And then immediately watched that situation flop and went, oh, okay, you didn't bless that. I learned a lesson. It's like God, he, 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 he kind of impressioned back on me. Yeah, because you didn't ask me. <laughs> I, I had that happen. Like sometimes there's leadership in your life. I, I, I jumped on a plane and ran somewhere and did something. And um, I got home. My le the, the pastor, the leader, my prophet in my life called me while I was on that trip and said, where are you at? And I, it, it, I just had that feeling hit me. Like I didn't even talk to him about this. I said, well, I'm over here uh, on the other side of the world. He goes, why don't you talk to me about this stuff? I said, I, well, I, I, I sorry. <laughs> he said, look, I, I, I wouldn't have felt good about you moving right now. And I got home, and we had a very clear understanding. He said, if I'm going to speak in your life, you need to talk to me. Like, if you want leadership in your life, that goes for your pastors. Even your small group leader, there's some times, some things maybe going on in your life. Talk to your small group. Talk to some leadership, some people who are discipling you in your life about situations before you go out and make a decision. God put them there for a reason. And it's important that we do that. Hey, kids, talk to your parents before you decide to dye your hair Purple. <laughs> See, by now, your parents probably were from the 90s generation. The 90s generation, when they were teenagers in the 90s, they could have told you about all kinds of stupid stuff they wish they hadn't have done. Like Jinkos. <laughs> Huge wide leg pants. Come on, you know what I'm talking about? Like, like Jinkos and all the t-shirts that ga at Gadzooks that had goofy sayings on them. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know, like some kids are really like, what is Gadzooks? It's like Hot Topic, but not as corny. No, anyways. <laughs> no, I'm not, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, dude, don't you pick on Hot Topic. No. No, like, like, like real talk, like, like. Seriously, like your parents might be able to help you make some decisions. Listen to this for just a second. So for, for before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased 
God. See, Enoch walked with God to the point that he walked right up. He didn't even die. The word says that he was taken up. I don't know about you guys, but anybody here prefer being taken up over dying? Like I would, I would take that. Yes, please. I'll take that one. Genesis 5 and 24 says, Enoch walked with God. What, what, what made him different was that he walked with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. Third point is this. The third person we pay attention to is in Hebrews 11 and 7. He says, by faith, Noah, everybody say Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. In holy, what? Fear. Now we're going to talk about dealing with fear and dealing with situations a little bit in this series, but, but, but the fact of the matter is, there, there is a time to have, a, have the, the, the fear of God in your life to realize, I need to make a move right now. There needs to be some changes that take place in my life. So he said, in holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. James 2 and 22, it says, you see that faith and his actions were working together as his faith was made complete by what, he, what is it? By what he did. By what he did. Now, this is a key point right here. I, I got to put God first. I got to walk with him and then what are my actions? What am I doing in my life that is bringing that faith to fruition? What, 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 what is God using me in a way that I, I show that faith? Fourth thing is this, Abraham's lesson. Now this is one that, 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 that I find to be kind of harder. I'm going to go ahead and give you the point off Abraham's lesson. Uh, it's wait patiently. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, wait patiently. But wait, you just said put God first. Walk with him daily. Act on his word. Act on his word. Then he said wait patiently. That don't make no sense, right? Like, what, 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 what do you mean? It means, it means that I'm not going to move. I'm, like, I'm not going to move on things before I've spent a little time in the word. I'm going to act through the word of God in my life. I'm going to chill out. Look at your neighbor and say, chill out. Look at the other one and say, calm down. Yesterday, we have people that are moving here from all over the place. And I'd just like to say, wherever you come from, wel welcome to Waco, Texas. Glad to have you. But those of you guys who have moved here, you're going to appreciate this. Yesterday, we were driving and a guy in a little car Zipped out in front of me, turned out in front of me, and I had to slam on my brakes to, to stop. And, and he was in a, like, a, like a little car, like, I mean, I hope he's not at church this morning. He's going to be like, man, you talking about me? <laughs> like, he was in like, like, what car would come to your mind when you think of a guy in a little car zipping around in front of people and cutting them off? See, you, you guys got to go back a little further. Go, go, go back to think of the car. Did anybody... Miata? <laughs> a little, yeah, a Miata. It was a Miata, actually. And he zipped out in front of me, and I just went, Psh, must be one of them new move-ins. Dude with, dude with his hair flying in the wind in a dadgum Mazda Miata. Psh. So I zip up, like, I, I can't see this. And I see it's the Texas tag. I was like, well, maybe he's lived here long enough to get his Texas tag. And I get up a little bit closer, and it says Mazda of Lufkin, Texas. <laughs> now, if you know anything about my family, I was born in Nacogdoches, Texas. That's deep east Texas. Lufkin's about 15 minutes from from. <laughs> Nacogdoches, I learned very quickly in that situation. Oh, <laughs> we do that too. <laughs> in other words, I can't blame it on somebody else. Um, and then it was just, it just, it wasn't 20 minutes later. 
guy zipped, he, he got ran up on my rear end and he was whipping around. We're, we're, like, we're, on a, like, we're literally in a neighborhood and he's like side to side and he's like, get out of my way. And he's in a little sports car and he's, get out of my way. And I'm like, what did I say? I said, I did it again. Well, that one's got to be one of them. <laughs> he zips around. What did it say? Dealership name, Waco, Texas. Okay, God, I give up. Learned a lesson. Hey, Chris, maybe you need to chill out. Right? See, a lot of times we, we, we see things go on in the world around us. And we want to we wanna, we wanna cast blame into situations. We want to we wanna get mad at situations. And we want to act on those situations. And Abraham, he, he, he's kind of like, you think about this. God promised you something, and you're still sitting around waiting on it. Now, we're learning to wait. Listen to this. Hebrews 6, 15 says, And so far, so afar waiting a patient, patiently, Abraham received what was promised. He received what was promised. Now, he learned to wait patiently, but, but, but he, he, well, we know he was very patient, Chris. He was very, was he very patient? Now, at one point, he took things into his own hands. Some historians, biblical historians, would argue that the seed of Abraham is still paying for that decision. And I want to tell you today, don't take things into... We, we live in a society, we're Americans, we're, 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 we're those people who, we take the bull by the horns, right? And God's looking at you and he's saying, listen, right now, I need you to grab hold of my word right now and follow me right now. Wait on me right now. Hebrews 10, 37 through 38 reads like this. It says, for in just a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. We've been preaching about this. God, I've been waiting on your coming, but you still, listen, be patient. He says, he will come and will not delay, but my righteous one will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. This is not a time to, to, to shrink back, but it's a time, it's a time to really get a hold of God in our lives. I really feel like right now, of all times in your life, mom, dad, student, whoever you are, this is a time I better pull in close to the kingdom of God. I better stick my family deep within the kingdom. This is a time. Number five, Moses' lesson, don't trust your feelings. Don't trust your feelings. Now, I, I tell you what, my feelings sometimes are very affected by the things that go on around me. But just honesty in the room, how many of you guys deal with your feelings from time to time? Honesty in the room, deal with my feelings. My, I tell this joke before, not joke, but I've told this before. Like, I always say it. Like, I, I don't get offended. And then when I'm mad, my wife's like, you, she told me one time, she said, well, well, you're getting offended. I said, I don't get offended. I don't get offended. I ain't offended. Weak people get offended. You're offended. And it has drawn anger from you. <laughs> See, my feelings, boy, I tell you what, my feelings, they set my mind in some crazy places sometimes. Don't trust your feelings. Second Corinthians, I, I want to take a little detour just, just a second away from Hebrews 11. But Second Corinthians 10, 4, and 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down of strongholds. He said, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Arguments. You know that every argument is not your argument? Fun fact. When you see someone post something that you know is absolutely wrong and you see an argument taking place under that post, it is, it is an interesting thing. Guess what? You do not have to get involved in the argument. It's really easy. Just, just keep moving. Right? I, I, I used to do this. Like, I was, mm. Like, man, ooh. 
They are wrong, and they need to know they're wrong. And then, <coughs> just, just, oh, God. And the day goes by, God's going, yeah, you're going to wait on me, or are you gonna, you just, you're going to do what you want to do? You should have probably consulted with me about that. Casting down arguments. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Here's the next part. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of who? Christ Jesus. Now, this morning, I know we've been on a high note today. I've slowed down a little bit. I'm, we're not wild today. As a matter of fact, you might get out of church a little earlier today. Praise God. My God. Man, dude, that is something to really feel the altars about this morning. So, <laughs> why, well, Chris, you're talking about imaginations and your thoughts and all that. Why? He, well, I wanted to do this. What did he say just, just before? I'm going to go to 1 Timothy 2. In this passage, just before he, he the passage I'm going to read to you, just before this, he writes, live a quiet and peaceful life in godliness and reverence. And then he says, for this in 1 Timothy 2, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the, what? Here we go again, knowledge of the truth. What does this have to do with feelings? I told you this story, and I thought I'd bring a little better, a little better perspective to it today. Perspective is a big thing. How many of you guys have heard the saying, perspective is reality? Wave at me if you've heard that before. Um, I, I don't know if I believe that perspective is reality. Because something may have happened on the other side of a tree, and my perspective was that nothing happened on the other side of the tree. Is it reality? No, something happened on the other side of the tree. Why? Because I couldn't see it. Like when any parents you hear, you ever have your kids come to you, and they're just like, she just... Punched me in the face. I used to just jump on it. Did you? Like, I, I jumped all over one of my daughters one time. Like, I'm not even going to lie. She got some correction in that moment. And then I found out later from the other kid, she goes, it didn't quite go down like that, Dad. Talk about feeling like a dog. I said, oh, man. I learned a lesson that day. I looked at I, I I get, they'll come to me, they'll go, ah, nah, 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 nah. I look at them and say, guess what? I, I, I didn't see what happened. Right? Both of you know the truth of what happened. Now, this is, where I, this is where I drop Jesus all into it and conviction and everything. One of you is lying. And what does the word say about it? That's usually when both of them go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why? Because she, what she didn't tell was right before she swung at her and punched her, well, um, she pushed her, right? She don't tell that perspective. Now, so what, what are you talking about? Perspective is not always the truth. So the way I see things sometimes, I let things affect me sometimes in a way that it affects my feelings and then my reaction to those things, it's wrong. So what do I do? This is key. Now that my thoughts, why, why do I, I, I take captivity every thought. I put it in the Word. I let the Word of God process how I think. Now that I've done that, I choose to walk in faith over my feelings. Now, that, that's not very deep. But I want to tell you something. A lot of us, especially in our movement, the spirit-filled movement, we go a lot on what my dad loves to call, I've said it a few weeks ago, the hooga booga. Like, like we start going full Star Wars mode, mm, the force is strong in this situation. <laughs> no, like I said it last week or in the last few weeks, no, no like, like you... You, you, you got some things going that your feelings, like sometimes I'm not going to just jump on a situation because my feelings may lead me to do something that's unbiblical. You see what I mean now? I put my thoughts under the captivity of the word of God. 
I say, look, God, I give my thoughts to you. The way I'm going to view the world, I'm going to view them through a biblical lens. I'm going to view this situation through a biblical lens. Hebrews 11, 24 through 27 says, By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. You think he didn't want to walk around and just be? He said, I refuse to be known. As a son of the Pharaoh's daughter, he chose when he found out who he was to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He goes on. He says, by faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. And let me me break this point to you right now. Faith creates opportunity for God to show himself to you in situations. If it wasn't for the faith that Moses had to walk away from from all of the things, the lavish lifestyle he could have had to follow God and God's call for his life, he'd have never had that moment at a burning bush where God spoke to him directly. See, when you walk in faith, it creates opportunities. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, we live by, everybody say, faith, not by sight. We live by faith, not by sight. When you live live by faith, last week I talked about how when you live by faith, it draws people to you. Talked about that revival. Why do I need revival in my life? Because when there's life in me, when the the life of the Holy Ghost is is in me and, and God's doing things in me, it draws people who have death in their spirits and death in their life. What is that? That's sin in their life. It draws them. Why? Because there is a there's a desire in them. Their soul desires to be close to God. I really do believe that. Come on, do you believe this stuff this morning? If you believe this, come on, let's give God. Come on. I believe it. Just a few more points this morning. Joshua's lesson we learn from in Scripture. We learn this, to thank God in advance, or, or better said, to have a thankful heart, have a, have a stature of thankfulness. Really, it's a, everybody says, it's attitude of gratitude. I'm going to have an attitude of gratitude. In Hebrews 11:30 says, by faith, The walls of Jericho fell after people had marched around them for seven days. See, attitude of gratitude will help you step out in situations and just say, God, you know what? No matter matter what you do in this situation, I trust you. God, I've, I've, I've ran, I've put you first. I've walked with you and prayed and talked to you in this situation. I've waited on you and I've, I've paid attention to your scripture. I've let your word be true. And I've waited on you in the, proper, in the proper way. I've had a thankful heart. I've not let my feelings control me. So now, God, I'm going to step out in a situation. I'm going to step out into this world and face this world. And I'm just going to let you take care of it. See, a lot of us this morning, you, you may be dealing with some things and I don't know if I'm going to go deep into it, but a lot of us, we go, and I'm not picking on you for this, and a few weeks ago I made a comment about it, but I'm not, I don't mean to pick on you about this. I don't mean to pick at this issue because I'm someone who has been affected by this myself. But a lot of us want to throw medication at our situations, but really we don't want to deal with the situation. And this morning I want to encourage you of something, that if you trust God, He always does the right thing as our musicians come back this morning Philippians 4 and 6 says this it says do not be say that word with me anxious about anything like see a lot of us are facing we're facing hard situations and hard decisions we're going through times where we're talking about revival but Chris I don't feel like revival is happening in me listen do not be anxious about anything But in every situation, by prayer, by what? Prayer and petition. With what? Thanksgiving. Present your request to God. This brings me to my seventh seventh and final point this morning. And I told you this morning, I told you last week, I made a statement, and I want to clarify this. Not clarify, I want to to make the statement again. And I want you to understand some things. We believe, this is a, I, b- I believe that the, the, 
the, the, that Jesus built his house on the rock and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What does that mean? That, that means, who's, who am I talking about? I'm talking about Peter, and last week we preached about, about revival and the first outpouring of the Spirit. And, and we, I told you, I said, I said, listen, we are an Acts 238 church. And so today, I, I wonder, like, I, I wonder where you are in your relationship with God. If you're new here, have you, have you, have you taken these steps? I believe that scripture lays out your next step. And every Sunday morning, there needs to be someone taking one of those next steps. Or I'll tell you what, you can take all of those next steps. This, so come on, do you believe God? I believe God wants to move on you this morning. final lesson that I want to point on today or seven lessons today how I can walk in faith and we're going to talk about how to deal with some different things next week I'm going to look at depression this week was kind of a rough week I don't know if you guys keep up with news and all that kind of stuff it's kind of a stock market was kind of scary this week saw some weird stuff happen and I don't, I don't believe that stuff ought to cause us to live in depression. I, I don't believe that stuff should cause us to live in stress to a level that we have anxiety. What did the scripture just say? Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious about some things. Don't be anxious. No, he said, don't be anxious about anything. But I believe this point this morning, this one right here, is the one I really want to sink into you this morning before we leave this place. It's simple. I know a lot of us, like especially if we've been in church a long time, I'm with you. I go to pastor's conferences sometimes, and a pastor preaches something, and I go, well, that was good, but I didn't really. But I've learned something. I, I set, some people sat behind us just this year. Brandon's there, you guys are with us, and a young lady stepped up, she preached, she spoke something over the room, and it was something into the room that needed to be spoken. It was simple. But it was one of those like, do unto others as you would have them do unto you kind of, kind of simplicities, and, and to, to adults like, yeah, pfft, I already know that. Yeah, but do you do it? And I heard two guys behind me go, is that all she's got? Preachers. And they got up and they walked out of the room. I turned around, I looked at my wife, and I said, oh, I'd be scared to be those guys. Because I want to receive every bit of the word of God, all of it. But this is where God's calling us to. Don't just receive it. I want you to do it. Why? Because when you do things my way, I always do the right. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not speaking about speaking. If God was here and wanted to tell us something today, when you do things my way like these men did it, I always do the right thing. Hebrews 11, 39 through 40 says this. Says, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what they had been promised. What? Yeah, I mean, you, you think about that for a second. Moses, we're going to walk into the promise and Moses didn't see the promise. Land. Abraham, he was promised a son, but he didn't, he didn't, he didn't see all these many nations that would, that would come from him. When you pay attention to to these scriptures, you see that the promises that were given, Abel got murdered. Enoch just swept away. Joshua goes in, takes the promised land, and then watches Israel begin to just within within just it just took just a few stories, and, and already people in Israel were beginning to backslide. Yet, what did it say? Yet God had planned something better. Listen to me for a second. 
God had planned something better. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says this in the Living Bible. It says, This plan of mine is not what you would work out, neither are my thoughts the same as yours. Like God, like sometimes we'll feel something. God, I feel like I have a promise on a situation in my life. But God, you're not working it out the way I would see fit that you would work it out. God, I let look, I need revival in my life. You know what that means? I need you to. I need you to bless my business so I start making a bunch more money. I need like I God, I want revival my I I want to I just I just want to be. I just want to see things that only make me happy in this world. Like we we think when revival has like God, God, you got to do you're going to do it this way. This is how you're going to do it. This is how I expect for you to do it. And God's looking at you and goes, "No, I'm going to do it my way because when I do it my way, it's going to be perfect. And it's like I tell my kids all the time. We were at Disney World, and one of them was doing something, and they were flopping around, and then she did something, and she, want, she wanted to run up to, I can't remember if it was to one of the princesses or something like that. Like, guys, even me, when I saw some of the princesses, I was like, oh, my God. Like, they really make them look like the princess. But I, I looked at one of them at one point. I said, hey, baby, guess what, guess what, guess what? You're not the only person here. You see, all the, there's probably like 500,000 people in this place today. Guess what? What, Dad? They're excited about Baal also. What, what does that have to do with it, Chris? Listen, sometimes things don't work out exactly. Like, I don't, they don't work out to where I see myself, where I thought myself would be in the situation. Because God, there's other people God's working through and things are going on through. And I have to trust that God, you're working, you know what, God? I'm going to trust you working me out just how you want to work me out. God, fit me into it exactly how you want me in it. I don't have to be the lead role of every story. Come on, that's a heavy bomb on us. But, but Chris, we're the, we're the TV generation. We're the, but I, we always see ourselves as the first guy in that story. He said, this plan of mine is not what you would work out. Neither are my thoughts the same as yours. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than your stand up all over the room this morning? As our altar team comes down this morning, I wonder how many people in this place we we come out of preaching man you preaching revival dude and I, I'm not like I, I'm not seeing it yet but but today you just need a moment right now God I got up this morning put my clothes on by faith I came to church this morning by faith I even gave some of us this morning by faith God I believe you're moving in my situation. Maybe it's your first Sunday with us. Maybe, maybe you've been coming to church, but you haven't truly given your life to God. Maybe you've given your life to God in the past, but you've walked away. What did I say last week? We're in Acts 2.38 church. What does that mean? Peter preached. Find yourself in one of these places this morning. They asked him, what do we do? And he said, he, he answers back. And what does he say? He says, everybody say this with me. Repent. He said, be baptized. In the name of Jesus, that's your second thing you can do this morning. He says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Where are you at this morning? Here's what I want us all to do. I wonder this morning if we can all lift our hands to heaven. Wherever you're at this morning, you have a step to take today. Well, Chris, I've already, I've, 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 had, I've already done all those things. Yeah, but maybe I need to turn to God. Maybe today I need to die out. I need to, I need to have a repentance moment again and turn to Jesus and hand some things over to him. If that's you this morning as our hands are lifted, God, we thank you 
for your word. We thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in our church today, God. We thank you, Jesus, that we can trust in you, that we can walk in you, God, and that we know you'll walk out every situation in our lives. And God, we're asking you this morning, come into our lives, God. Work what only you can work in our lives. Do what only you can do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, if you believe that, say it in Jesus' name. Come on, if you need prayer this morning, if you need prayer this morning, come to the altar.